Okay, welcome back to part three of our Hyper Duino tutorial. Uh, in this part, we're actually going to wire up uh, a real model and show how you can build a Hyper Studio stack to uh, control it. Uh, so what we're going to use is the little model of the volcano that came with your Hyper Duino kit. And you can imagine this is something that uh, a student uh, might use for, say, a science fair project. Uh, maybe they have like a big poster board or something like that. Uh, but here we just have this kind of very simple three-dimensional model of a volcano. And so what we're going to do is just punch a hole uh, in the middle and of the, let's say, the lava field. And we'll have the LED there. And then next to it we'll have another spot where we will put our photo cell so it can respond to uh, the user. So we're just punch a hole here in the middle of the lava. And I'm using the foam that actually came with the... Uh, Hyper Duino there just to provide something to punch through uh, and I'm just using the little screwdriver um, and then once I've done that I can actually just take off the the clip on the screwdriver uh, just to make the hole a little bit bigger uh, so the LED fits nicely in it and we can just push the LED through from the other side and then the next thing we need to do is just have a small slit for the uh, photo cell, so we'll just put that right next to the uh, hole for the LED, uh, and I'll just use the flat end of the screwdriver to punch that through, and now we'll wire it up. So we'll take our photo cell, and we'll just thread that through, and attach it back to the same two wires. And again, it doesn't matter which wire goes to uh, which pin uh, for the photo cell. Either one is fine. And then once we have that wired up, we'll take the LED and we'll wire it through our little hole that we made. Uh, so there's the LED. And you can see it is blinking like crazy. Okay, there we go. So it's all wired up. All right. And... Good. It looks like I need to actually adjust the uh, the potentiometer. Uh, so let's see if we actually just tape this together, uh, just using a little bit of tape here for the tab. Um, so we'll tape it all up and stand it up. And now what I'll do, you can see it's just kind of blinking like crazy because the photo cell is right next to the LED. Um, so I'll just use the screwdriver and adjust. Uh, the blue variable resistor until the uh, LED turns off. Okay, so again, depending upon your lighting conditions, uh, you may need to adjust the blue variable resistor, the one that's labeled A0 for analog pin 0, uh, either to the left or the right. You want it so it's just barely off, so when you cover it up with your finger, then the LED lights back up. So now that we've got our little model working, we can actually go in and create a real Hyper Studio stack uh, to give some information about volcanoes uh, whenever someone puts their finger over the photo cell. So let's go back to Hyper Studio and start doing that. Okay, so now we're going to create a new Hyper Studio stack to control the Hyper Duino. Uh, so let's quit out of the photo cell test. And it's always easy to start out with something that's already working. So let's open up the Arduino LED test stack. Um, now you notice when this starts up, we're currently in browse mode where you can actually use the stack. Uh, by the way, a stack is just a collection of cards. This is a single card here. Uh, you can see at the bottom it says card one of one. Uh, you can have multiple cards. They can be connected to each other. Uh, cards can do different things. Uh, but right, right now we'll just have a single card. Um, in addition to browse mode, you can also switch to edit mode, which is what we want to do right now. So we'll just click the edit button. And you can see now everything has a little check mark next to it, um, indicating that it's editable. And we can go ahead and actually start changing some of these buttons. Um, so for example, if we wanted to change, so instead of using pin 13, we wanted to use uh, pin 9 for the LED, uh, we could just change uh, the pin 13 button. So for example, there's the button here that says pin 13 on. If we double click on that, 
the window comes up, which lets us edit that button. Uh, once it comes up, we click on Actions, and you can see uh, here's all the different actions that this button can do. Uh, and what we want to do is click on More Button Actions because this is where the Arduino actions are. And we go under here, and you can see there's the Arduino setup. You can also be an Arduino watcher, so this would be, for example, for the photo cell where you're watching from input. Um, but instead, we want to light up an LED, so we click on Setup, and we come in here, and here are all the different pins. So these are all of the digital pins that we can use. Um, you can see that most of them are set to ignore. If we scroll down, uh, we see pin 13, which is set to be output, and it's set to high. High means on, low means off. Uh, so this will light up the LED. Um, so what we want to do now is switch to pin 9 instead. So we're going to switch pin 9 to be output and we'll turn it to high and then for pin 13 we will switch it to ignore uh, so it won't be used at all and we will hit OK and hit OK again for the more button actions and we probably want to change the name of the button um, so we can actually go back to the appearance mode and then we can actually just change uh, let's see, pin 13 on, we will change this to pin 9 on. And you can see it changes it right away, and we're done with that. Okay, and now we can go out of here, and we can just click on the little X. Okay, so let's keep going. And now we want to just edit the rest of the buttons. Uh, so before we do that, let's actually save a uh, new version of this so we don't mess up our test stack. Uh, so we'll call this Arduino, um, let's say test um, pin 9, for example. Um, so we've saved that, so now we don't have to worry. Um, and let's delete some of these other uh, buttons that we don't care about anymore. Um, so we'll turn off all of these, uh, get rid of all this text. Okay, let's go ahead and edit this pin 13 off button. Uh, this is going to be the same thing that we did before. Uh, so we go under Arduino setup and we change from uh, pin 13 to pin 9. So pin 9, we're going to make an output pin and it's going to be low, which means turn off. Um, and then pin 13, we will set to ignore instead. Okay, so now we've switched from pin 13 to pin 9. Okay, so let's go ahead and oh, let's change the name of it. Uh, we'll call it pin 9 off. Um, and now we need to actually do something when the photo cell is covered up. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and create a welcome message. Uh, so this would be, for example, if someone comes along at the science fair, um, they could put their finger over the photo cell and it would say something like, Welcome to my project. Um, so to do this, we're going to create a new button, um, and all this button is going to do is just play that welcome message. So we'll double click on it to edit it, um, we'll call it welcome, and then for the actions we'll say play a sound, and we will say record a sound, and we'll go ahead and just record, uh, let's see, okay, so we'll just record Welcome to my project. Welcome to my project. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, so we'll say OK. And that's all we need to do for that button. Um, and this button actually doesn't really, it's going to get played automatically, so it doesn't really matter where it's, in fact, we could actually probably make it invisible, but we'll just leave it there for now. And now we need to actually wire up the photo cell so when you put your finger over it, then it actually activates that button. Uh, so to do that, we'll create a new button. And this one will say, uh, let's call it activate welcome. And for its action, uh, we want to do more button actions. And then we want to be a watcher. So before, remember, we were Arduino setup was for a uh, lighting up an LED. Arduino watcher is for getting input. 
Um, so watching what's happening on the Arduino. So we'll click on that. And when the um, uh, analog input or the photo cell is actually covered up, then we want to do something and we want to play the welcome message. So we'll click on welcome. Um, and now it takes us into our Arduino watcher. And here, uh, this is where we choose what's going to activate it. So we're going to scroll down until we see the analog. And we've got our photo cell on uh, A0. And we want to choose analog. And now you can see the value here is actually changing. And this is the value that the photo cell is currently reading. Uh, you can't see, but if I actually put my finger over it, you can see it goes down. Now it's around 200. Um, take my finger back off. It goes up to about 400. Um, so it looks like it's going from a low of about 200 and something when I have it covered up with my finger up to about 400 uh, when it's completely uncovered. And so we'll just say anywhere from 0 to 300, then we should activate that welcome message. So this means if it's brighter than that, in other words, it's not covered up, then it won't activate the button. Uh, but if it goes dimmer than that, say somebody puts their finger over it, then it'll go ahead and activate the button. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and say OK, hit OK, OK again, um, and now I'm done. So I can go ahead and try it out. Um, I'll go back and I'll switch to browse mode so I can actually test it. And I'll just put my finger over the photo cell. Welcome to my project. Okay, and so it looks like it's working. Uh, so now you can imagine you could also do something like um, have that welcome uh, button also activate the LED. Uh, so it could turn on the red LED in the middle of the lava. Uh, you could have it go to a web page with more information about volcanoes, uh, or you could even have it go to a, a new card in the uh, Hyper Studio stack. Uh, so you might have another card which has pictures of volcanoes or more information or a video. Okay, there's one last thing I want to show you. Um, with something like a watcher, like this Activate Welcome, one thing you might notice is that when you first come to the card, you actually have to click on the button to activate it. Um, and if you forget to do this, then it won't actually respond to events. Uh, but we can actually change that. So if we go into edit mode, uh, double click on it, and we'll go into more button. Oh, and by the way, I've actually changed this. Uh, if we go into more button actions, Arduino Watcher, uh, you can see I've now set it up. Uh, so not only does it activate the welcome message, um, but it also uh, turns off the LED and turns on the LED depending upon the settings of the photo cell. Uh, so for example, if you go under the, uh, the welcome message, uh, if you recall for pin A0, it turned on or played the welcome message if it was anywhere between 0 and 300. In other words, the photo cell was covered. Um, if we Same thing for pin 9 on, uh, that's also 0 to 300, so the LED will come on when, it's co when the photo cell is covered up. Uh, for pin 9 off, that button, um, we actually change that. So if the photo cell is anywhere greater than 300, um, then it turns off the LED. And so this means the uh, photo cell is, is uncovered. Um, so let's go back now to the main page. Um, so what we can do is we can actually turn on an automatic timer. And when we do that, we can say as soon as this button appears, in other words, as soon as that card is shown, then go ahead and activate the button. And that'll mean that it'll start working as soon as um, that button appears, so we don't actually have to press the button to get it to start responding. Um, so let's go ahead and try that. And now I'm gonna cover up the photo cell with my finger, and the LED to my project. lights up, and it plays my message. And when I take my finger away, the LED turns off. Uh, so that's just one tidbit. Make sure to do that uh, activate um, so that when your card appears, then your uh, Hyper Studio uh, button is ready to go.